Howdy, folks. Welcome to The Right Angle. I'm Alfonso Rachel sitting in for Bill Whittle and hanging with my guys, Scott Ott and Steve Green. I don't know which side they're on when I do this, man. I, I, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I, always, I, just, I always guess wrong. That's why I don't do it anymore. <laughs> right. So yeah, we'll, we'll just yeah. pull one of those. And as I said earlier, uh, you know, um, since I'm filling in this week, uh, the guys didn't get the uh, the memo from uh, from Dilbert or anything like that, uh, that, that we're not supposed to be hanging out. But anyway, uh, thumbs up to you. But anyway, no, we're going to talk about... Um, I wanted to talk about uh, what, what went on, I think it was about a week ago, uh, with that uh, satanic display from, uh, what's his name, Sam Smith. Uh, mm. Man, 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 what oh, am I the doing wrong? Yeah, the Grammys. What, yeah, what am I doing man? I'm a musician. How come, now, th- I've, I heard this guy's music, and it sucks, right? It's garbage. <laughs> the, the lyrical content is garbage. And I'm like, man, if that's, if, there's no excuse for like, you know, my musical effort to not go anywhere, because if people really think that my music is garbage and that it really sucks, then that's all the more reason for them to buy it, because that's what people are buying. You know, they're sharing and they're buying and they're streaming and whatever garbage music. But anyway, that's not my point. My point is this. In light of how, you know, this this lewd display was, you have people complaining, I guess, to the FCC about this performance. And that, uh, you know, I guess, you know, they didn't like the themes of it and the scanty clad women, if they were women, I don't know. Right. So and all that sort of stuff. And my thing is, to say yeah, that. and my thing is this. Why are you complaining to a perverted government? This government is going, you know, it's like going full pervert, right? <laughs> Governments that's leaked, that's making it acceptable and making it like, you know, you have to, you have to endorse this. If not, you know, you're just a hater and we're going to cancel you or we're going to, you're going to get some sort of punitive measure against you. You're going to go complain to that government about perversion. And I'm like, that doesn't seem to make much sense. Uh, I guess whoever the, these people are doing, you know, they, they, they try to go with the whole adage of government is not the answer. Government's the problem. But you're going to go to the government for answers concerning this perversion. And uh, one uh, first question I'm going to ask anybody want to jump in uh, and, and, and uh, cut me off, please do, because I'm rambling. Uh, right. You know, <laughs> oh, somebody yeah, the, do no, if, if you want me to jump in, this has been bugging me and I haven't mm-hmm. been able to talk about this either on Right Angle or on the live chat I do over at PJ Media with my buddy Stephen Cruiser. And it's just how lame that whole mm-hmm. Sam Smith thing was. And not just the music, <laughs> so although the music is is just so uninteresting it's it's a yeah. travesty that it's popular um popular music and i split ways quite a while ago because it's just uh, the, the 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 i won't get into that it's not the point but i mean ozzy smith was uh, ozzy smith <laughs> ozzy osborne sorry i'm heavily medicated on mucidex right now ozzy osborne was doing devil stuff biting the heads off of bats on stage in the early 70s Mm -hmm. and sam smith looks like john lovitz playing the devil on saturday night live 30 (laughs) years ago i don't know if you remember this it's it it, it's one of my favorite sketches of all time but uh satan is on the people's court being sued by a hairdresser who uh didn't get uh the success in her hairdressing business that she was promised after selling her soul to satan and so she's suing him for like (laughs) 1800 bucks or, or whatever it was and it's just a great bit. And John Lovitz, who's kind of uh, uh, short and lumpy, is wearing, you know, one of those zip up the front devil suits with the little horn and and the, the little plastic pitchfork. And he's just owning it. And the best part of the sketch, I think, wasn't wasn't the, the people's court part, which he lost, by the way, he has to pay the, the, the 2,400 bucks or whatever it was to the, to the hairdresser. But on the way out, when uh, Dave Llewellyn, uh, who I think was played by Kevin Nealon, is doing the, uh, the, the post-trial interviews, and he's doing the interview with Satan, and uh, at, at the end of the, and, you know, saying, you know, you know it's, it's, it, it, it hurt, I have to pay the money, and all, all of that stuff. He's just acting like a typical disappointed plaintiff on or, or defendant on, on the people's court. But at the end of the little exit interview, he, he kind of notices the cameras and gets right into it. Obey me. Follow me. And the guy tries to get him to, 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 to stop. And he's like, 
I'm working here. Come with me. It is evil. It's just one of the funniest things you've ever seen in your life. And at some point, Sam Smith must have seen this thing when he was probably nine or 10 <laughs> years old. And he thought it was scary. He thought, ooh, that's the devil. That's what the devil's like. I'm going to scare and offend everybody by dressing up like John Lovitz did on Saturday Night Live in 1992. So, so this 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 is why I love you, man. As soon as you said the music was lame, I realized, well, yeah, the music was lame, but it's nothing compared to the rest of his act. Yes, yes. Now, if 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 I if I may though, I think this is the issue between between Sam and John Levis and even Ozzy Osbourne. Ozzy, 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 believe in Osbourne, right? I think this is the big difference. It's one thing for for Ozzy to bite the head off a bat, which I think he thought was a I think he thought it was a piece of chicken. Somebody passing some chicken. <laughs> <laughs> he, There's no telling what this, Ozzy's this, thinking at any given moment. Hey, this bat, this doesn't taste like chicken. <laughs> Everything smells taste like bloody chicken. Anyway, um, <laughs> but the thing is, Ozzy wasn't promoting, even though it, I mean, it, the, I mean, the devil is the devil, man. <sighs> but Ozzy wasn't promoting this kind of sexual perversion and even John Lovitz you know wasn't promoting this this sexual perversion when you've got this person who's basically saying look man let's let's just go full pervert right let's just go ahead and give into our sexual desires let's let's you know if you want to be a if you're a man and you want to be a woman you do it that's 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 his you know that's his stick right and I think that's what people are having the problem with it's like look man it's supposed to be like you know a family show and you got, you know, these women, if they're actually women, scantily clad, and you're promoting this, you know, you're just pushing, pushing sexuality and these indulgences in our face. It's not even so much, I mean, it is satanic, but, you know, where we're looking at it as a, as a cartoon, and it was, I man, it's cartoonish. It's like you got this cartoonish caricature of Satan. Partly, and the thing about it is, Steve, is that it makes it, that's the whole point. It does look cartoon, cartoonish. And with that, it makes it look benign. You know, but the whole but the whole <laughs> point of it is, is that even in that cartoonish thing that makes it more approachable and stuff like that, he's really pushing he's pushing poison, you know, and and what disappoints me, the reason why I brought up, you know, like um, you know, with the FCC and people complaining to, 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 the, uh, the, to the government, I'm like, look, you got all these people giving these people attention for these things that they do with music and stuff like that. What happened to, to lighting a candle instead of cursing the darkness? These people are getting all the attention that they want from these people claiming to be virtuous because, oh, well, you look at these people are doing it and, and they're praising Satan and all that. Hey, you know what? They're going to do what they're going to do. How about <clears throat> jumping in their way and supporting people who aren't doing that? You know, give, give, pay that attention to somebody else who's got more of your values in mind. But I don't really see people doing much of that. It's like they would just rather complain than than to complete than to compete or support the competition of it. I, what do you think, Scott? Am, am, am I getting that wrong? I don't think so. And um, you know, I don't know how long the Grammy ceremony runs these days. I know it used to be three or four hours. It was quite a night. Um, and I have a simple way of dealing with these kinds of things and it's I just don't watch. <laughs> so <laughs> I I saw the headlines the day after. Now and this is from a guy who grew up with a love of music, who was in several rock bands uh in high school and college and who still loves great music. So it's not like I'm some, you know, Amish guy who who doesn't want to, you know, crank up the Victrola again. I I I have a great love for music. However, I also am almost 62 years old, and I look at the remaining span of my life as likely going to be shorter than the preceding span of my life. And anytime I am asked to commit three or four hours to something, I have to weigh that against what other things I might be able to do in a like amount of time. And so <laughs> I just go, you know, what are the odds that I'm going to watch the Grammys and come away from there going, Man, I am so glad I devoted three or four hours of my life to that. I think that that was the most useful. <laughs> it's just probably not going to happen. I can always watch highlights later if there's anything good that comes out of it. But I, I actually want to say I appreciate the artist uh, putting on the horns, you know, and carrying the trident and, and the costume. Uh, so because in reality, the danger uh, in what he is doing and what his colleagues are doing is when they're not wearing the horns. Mm. 
it's when they're not drawing attention to the fact that this is, uh, you know, an intentionally evil enterprise. It's when that they are trying to make it seem like, for example, it's okay for parents to, you know, let their kids buy these uh, these songs um, or download these songs or watch these videos or whatever because. These seem like decent people, fine young men, uh, charming young women, and they and and it's okay to watch this stuff. It, you know, we always go back to that scene from uh, broadcast news where Albert Brooks is like, you know, the devil is not going to be wearing, a, you know, to have a pointy tail and be have horns and wearing a red suit. Mm-hmm. He is just going to uh, decrease our values little by little until nothing matters anymore. And that's really the threat. It's not so much the the Halloween costume guys. It's what he does the other 364 days a year and, and what his colleagues do. Um, it's funny because we do watch, uh, my wife and I like to watch these talent show competitions where, uh, not just the talent shows, the ones where they sing. I don't like the generic talent shows where they come out and do weird, you know, gymnastic things or whatever. Um, I, I like to sing. So I like to listen to people sing. And so- when we watch like American Idol or The Voice, um, you'll often hear the coaches or the judges on these shows say to the performer, look, um, stop putting on an act. We just want you to be your genuine self. And I thought, is that what Sam was doing? Like, it, <laughs> did Sam, you know, great professional that he is, finally cut through to the <laughs> core of who he really is? <laughs> Like, um, you know, apparently that's the that's the way you become successful if you're to listen to Katy Perry or Luke Bryan or Lionel Richie or or Blake Shelton or you know the other coaches are on these things. They're basically saying we uh, people want something authentic. They want to hear your real voice. They want to hear real stories, and so you just need to be yourself. Um, I shudder to think that there are so many people who, when they finally unmask themselves, look like they're writhing on the seventh level of Dante's Inferno. Um, I, you know, I don't, I don't think that that's what they dreamed of when they were little kids and they thought they'd really like to, you know, get up on stage and sing a bar or two. So ultimately, uh, Zoe is right. I think it's, it's not a matter of saying, you know, constantly getting up on our high horse and railing against people who do things that we disagree with. I mean, why are you surprised? I used to work for a cable TV company and, uh, they, they installed cable in my home for free and I could have everything for free. And I'm telling the installation guy, no, block that, block that, block that. No, we don't <laughs> want that, block less. this. Block. And, and the, guy, the guy yells into the other room to my wife and goes, hey, Mrs. Ott, um, is there anything your husband doesn't want to block? Because <laughs> I just think you open yourself up to to harm when you allow somebody else to program your computer. You're basically saying, hey, it's okay, come on in, you know, uh, but it's garbage in, garbage out when it comes to programming a computer. If you let that trash fill you up, then from the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks and the actions flow. And so, Zoe, you're right. It's not just uh, people should support artists who have a counter to that kind of a, of a moral approach to life, but frankly, we need more artists who are willing to get out there and and do it so well that they attract an audience that they that people want to hear them they don't just go because well we've got to go and support this right. because if the church doesn't go to this movie then this it'll flop and then we need to show those people in Hollywood that we want to see insipid movies with christian themes <laughs> no we, we need to make good stuff yes. yeah and you know we're supposed to be you know the the party of supply and demand you know, and there, there, it seems yeah. to be a short supply, <laughs> and there also be seems to be a shortage of demand. You know, the, the, it's, if you support it, it gets better. You know, but at the same time, there has to be the incentive to support. There has to be a sense of return, whether it's a return of you know a, a monetary return or or the return of is this a, making an effect in the culture. So one of those things just has to give. You know, but and maybe there's just a sacrifice that needs to be made on a trust issue. Just say, look, man, just support it. Because like I said, these people ain't going to stop doing what they're doing and it's going to get worse. It, 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 for them, it isn't even about the money anymore. It's about pushing an ideology. So that's that's what it is that they're doing. And I, I know I'm in good, you know, live and let live company here. You know, that's what we're about, live and let live. But there's a different interpretation of what live and let live means. And what these people are doing ain't live and let live, right? These people, when it terms, whether it's the gender issue or whichever, 
Um, you know, it's like you you just you decide that you want to kill off an aspect of yourself to soon to be reborn as something else. That's not live and let live. You know, you, you're 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 destroying something that's natural about you and and giving yourself over to an unnatural uh, presentation of yourself. That's that's not there's nothing live and live and, uh, let live about that. And and making it to where other people have to endorse it. You know, uh, that's that's not you know live and let live either. And and Steve, like I said, man, I you know I'm I'm in live and let live company here. It's like what did you did you think? That this would come to this where we're at, where we're just like, look, man, what you do is your business. I'm not going to make no judgment <laughs> against you or anything like that. You live however you want to live. And, hey, man, we could break bread and all that sort of stuff. But it's coming to a point right now where it's like, hey, you don't believe uh, what I want you to believe. We're going to fight. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I saw it developing. One of the reasons I left California back in 94, I was, you know, I was living in San Francisco after spending four years uh, way up north in, in Humboldt County. And that was maybe the, the, the birthplace of California live and let live. It was, it was the hippie counterculture, everybody do their own thing, but you could see the creeping intolerance. Um, by the time I got to San Francisco in 92, it was, uh, you are going to be tolerant or else. Mm. And yeah. It reminds uh, me of that song by Prong, that's man. That's tolerance. For, uh, if you guys look it up, you want, you want some real headbanging material, check out that song by Prong, uh, Forced Into Tolerance. Uh, it's got a couple of you know bleep words in there, but you know the, the, the point yeah. gets across. And I usually don't support that kind of stuff, but the song kind of rocks. And uh, awesome. but, but you're right, Steve, this, this, this developing intolerance has come to, you know, people are wanting to revisit the uh, the Stonewall Rebellion again. And, uh, you know, Scott, you know, we, 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 we look, you know, we're seeing these things play out. Uh, this, this, should, this shouldn't be a surprise to us. You know, we're, we're you know, you know, Steve, Scott, we're, we're not surprised by this stuff, man. We, 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 we really saw it coming, just like you said, you saw it a long time ago. And a lot of people are turning on their the, the news and they're surprised by this stuff. Man, I, I saw this stuff coming by reading the real news, man. I read it in the word of God. And when you see these people who are able to have the power to cancel people, they're having the power to, to bring these punitive measures against you if you don't endorse their lifestyle, uh, you know, and to a point where now they're wanting to revisit the Stonewall Rebellion. They're, they're, they're looking to go upside people's head with rocks now. Right. <sighs> and here's the thing. Sodom and Gomorrah already told us how this is going to work. Sodom and Gomorrah, you think that these people are just like these, these, these pansy or lip and you don't want to be in a lip to choke hold, okay? Sodom and Gomorrah wasn't just these people. They were all in all kinds of sexual deviance, whether it was homosexuality, whether it was incest, pedophilia, uh, I mean, pederasty, necrophilia, you name it. They did it all, right? And that's, that's the, the trajectory that we're going. It's like, look, if it makes you feel good, you go ahead and do it. But the thing is, Sodom and Gomorrah had become so oppressive with their indulgences that even the surrounding nations were like, and they were heathens too. And they were like, God, can you do something about this? So it's the same thing that's going on today where these people, man, they are becoming the oppressors. And we're just like, well, we don't want to do anything because we don't want to be seen as, as mean people. If I can invoke, uh, I think uh, Matt Walsh was just talking about, it. He, he, made his, he, drew, he drew his line in the sand. It says, look, man, you try to bring this stuff around my kids, we're going to fight, right? And, and people are taking it as a threat. And he's like, no, 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 I'm not coming after you. I'm not coming after you. But if you come after mine, right? And these people, they are, they've already made their statement. We're coming for your children. They didn't already said it. And they're, coming, they're ready to come after us with rocks to go upside our heads with. And they accuse us Bible thumpers of being the ones who want to go around stoning people. We ain't thinking about stoning you. The only stone I'm looking to go upside your head with is, is the chief stone himself, the word of God. That's it. But these people are talking about coming after us with stones. So just like Sodom and Gomorrah, these people are going to go oppressive on us. You know, so and we're thinking we don't want to be politically correct. We don't, I mean, politically correct. And we don't want to be seen as bullies all the while. They're coming to push their oppression on us. So I'm just saying this is still something to think about. Right. Just, you know, it's just something to consider. It ain't about being mean spirit. It ain't trying to be oppressive. It's, it's just keeping their uh, oppression off of us. That's all it is. So I thank you guys for tuning in the right angle. Something for chew on. Right. Something, you, you know, to drink down with your glass of wine tonight. Steve. <laughs> Only because oh, yeah. I'm talking about wine, because I'm going to have some, too. Anyway, <laughs> right on, y'all. Thank you guys for tuning in uh, for Bill Whittle, for Steve Green, for Scott Ott, whichever position that Mark's going to put him in. Thanks for tuning in the right angle. Good night.